what has inspired the Playfulness Festival and your passion for playfulness and helping people to engage more in that way? I think it's always been a big part of my life, this this aspect of playfulness. And um, the, the way I, I sort of narrate this this story, as I understood it, is that I was doing um, an online course with Charles Eisenstein about living in the gift. And in that course, um, we were working on our talents, like what it is we have to give to the world, you know, like living in the gift, you have something to gift, right? And it came and it popped out for me that playfulness was the thing, my, my gift. And um, it wasn't a surprise to the people I know. They was like, of course, <laughs> of course, that, that's what, yeah. But I hadn't ever really seen it as a thing. Um, you know, it was, I saw it as a modality. And um, now I see it more as even like a movement, you know. it's mm. um, It brings with it a lot of things, playfulness. But um, so anyway, I was doing all this research around playfulness with like a, with my new idea, this is my gift. And um, I'd already read quite a few books, um, writings by Bernie de Coven. And um, he's got some really cool stuff, um, s spiritual, philosophical, around play and playfulness, what it means, how we co-liberate other people through playing. Um, and, um, and so... I was looking into um, how to find out more about playing and playfulness. And then I came across this, this playfulness festival in Denmark, Counterplay, which they, they stopped They stopped doing it for a, a few years now anyway. And um, and I had to go there. <laughs> I had to go to this playfulness festival. And it was in Denmark, so it was all very, really organised. You know, there were like touchscreen computers on the walls in this library. And... Uh, Nothing quite like it is in Italy. You know, Italy's very, uh, everything works very well, but it's not like super technological, right? And um, there were lots of academic talkers about playfulness there, and there were lots of practical things. And um, and I'd already, I already had this feeling that I would like to bring a festival into the village where I live here, because it's such a beautiful medieval village here in Italy. And um, I talked to the mayor at that time, and I just suggested to him, said like, what do you think about it? And he was like, oh yeah, do it. And I was like, oh, okay. So, um, so yeah, I put together the first edition in, in the village, and um, and it was great. It was great. And um, then the, then the, the lockdown happened um, for the next year. So we did an online version. So I talked, met lots of people all around the world, and I keep meeting people all around the world that are there, that they're bringing playfulness into their things, and some really very um, special uh, special people. And um, and then um, then we started to do it in um, in this sort of like um, how do you say like sort of like a like a sort of camping ground. It's not really a camping ground, but it's um, it's an eco, I would say it's like an eco village. It's like it wants to be an eco village anyway. <laughs> it's getting there to be an eco village. So it's like very much out of the city. And um, and the first edition there, this is where I really sort of started to really believe a lot more in this work. And the first edition there, what I saw after just two days, it lasts for four, like four and a half days. After two days, I could just see that people were coming back to really back to their humanity. You know, they they sort of like dropped things. They were being like more kind to everybody, more available. And this might happen in all sorts of different like retreat situations, right? But it was something very special that um, people that didn't even know each other um, just felt that they were really connected into a big tribe and they could just be themselves and be silly and laugh and 